Marie, how dare you ignore me? How can you disrespect your mother-in-law? How could you behave like that? Hi, Gwen. I didn't mean to ignore you. Could you tell me what has made you upset? I checked our WhatsApp messages, so I don't think you asked me to do something. What? Are you sure you don't understand what you did? You haven't contacted me for two months, and you say you didn't mean to ignore me? I can't understand your way of thinking at all. Well, actually, I haven't contacted you for the last two months, but there's no need to contact you since there's nothing that I have to talk about. Since Edward and I got married and started our new life together, we have agreed that you wouldn't interfere too much with our lives and would live separately. That's something you agreed to do on your own, but not with me. Besides, I'm reaching out to you because I have something to talk about. It's something you should remember, but do you remember that? I'm actually not really sure. Can you tell me? What is that? It's been two months since our last messages. So I'm reaching out to you to see if there's any resolution or conclusion about our discussion. Well, I still don't understand what you're talking about. Are you serious? I can't believe you can't remember such an important thing. I'm so sorry. Can you tell me what it is about? It's about all of us living together. Oh. So have you already made a decision about it? Well, I think we have already told you that we wouldn't be able to. I told you that I couldn't agree on that. Edward also personally told you that we wouldn't be able to. You also agreed at that time. Marie, are you really Edward's wife? What do you mean? If you understand his feeling, you shouldn't have come to such a conclusion. It's true that I held my tongue at the time when you told me that, but this was to save his reputation. Actually, the one who should save face is you as his wife. Excuse me? He is a true gentleman. So he is just hesitant to say anything against you. You keep saying that you don't want to live with me. Edward is very kind. So he just pretended to agree with you. You took the words as he said, and you didn't even try to understand his true feelings. You are not suitable as his wife. I don't know what you're trying to say. Even though you repeat saying that you can't agree with that, this really is the result of our mutual understanding. After we got married, we both agreed to move away from his parents' house and live on our own. We also decided not to contact you unless we have something to talk about and not to live together. We've told you that, and you agreed to all of that. So I'm saying that it's just your opinion. No, as I've been saying, it's what we all, including you, have agreed. You're so selfish. And you push your own opinions. And you can't even think about your husband and his mother. It's been a year since you got married. And you still don't have enough awareness of what it means to be a wife? Saving husband's face is one of the requirements to be a good wife. You need to learn to be a little more humble. Let me, as your mother-in-law, educate you on that. Knowing you, I actually anticipated that you would refuse me living with you for some reason anyway. I've already sent all my stuff over there. No way! You won't be able to refuse after I move in. Now we can live together. Oh no, please consider again before moving in. This is something I've already decided. Since you become his wife, you should follow his mother's words. We've already told you before, but my parents currently live with us. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. You told me that your mother had a brain hemorrhage after your father passed away 10 years ago. She survived, but she has a disability because of that. She is now living with you, and you take care of her. Is that right? That's right. That's another thing I don't understand. Your mother lives with you. But why do you refuse to let me move in? My mother needs care. My dad has already passed away and my relatives live far away. So there's no one else to take care of her but me. My husband also passed away last year. You don't have any health challenges. Edward told me that the results of your medical checkup last month were very good. Your husband's pension and inheritance are also sufficient to support your living. Moreover, I remember that you mentioned it was comfortable to be alone. It's what I've said before, but not now. I can't believe you let an old mother-in-law like me live alone. You are really mean. Nope, that's not what I meant. So it seems like even though I am your relative, you treat me like a stranger. 
and don't want me to live with you. You take good care of your own mother and are harsh with your mother-in-law. I can't believe that such a woman is the wife of my son. Why do you involve him in your mother's care? If you want to take care of your mother, why don't you do it yourself? It's Edward who suggested we live with my mother. I'm sure he wants to live with me too. As I've been explaining. Oh my God, you are really irritating me. Regardless of what you say, we are going to live together. Even if you say so, we don't even have any available room. You should make room for me. Your mother is bedridden anyway. She doesn't need a private room. Put her in the hallway. How could you say that? Oh, come on, Marie. Don't be such a party pooper. You know, if you don't like the idea of you giving me your room, I have another option for you. It's a win-win situation, really. Just picture it. My stuff will arrive at your place tomorrow. And all you have to do is prepare my room by then. Easy peasy. Gwen, this is ridiculous. I can't just give you my room. It's impossible. I need my own space. Ugh, you're always so negative. Can't you just think outside the box for once? It's not that big of a deal. You're being such a buzzkill right now. You never understand what I mean, do you? It's like talking to a brick wall. I think I'll block you on WhatsApp. Yeah, that's right. I'll talk with Edward directly. He'll understand my genius plan. Gwen, this is crossing the line. You can't just block me and go behind my back. We're supposed to be friends. Friends? Ah. Friends support each other's brilliant ideas, Marie. But you're clearly not capable of that. You're so stuck in your own little world. I bet you can't even imagine how amazing it would be to have my room. It's like stepping into a magical wonderland. You're missing out, my dear. Gwen, I can't believe you're behaving like this. It's incredibly selfish and disrespectful. We need to have a serious conversation about boundaries. Ugh, save your lectures, Muddy. I don't have time for your nonsense. I'm going to have a fabulous time in your room, surrounded by all my fabulous things. You'll see. It'll be so much better than anything you could have ever imagined. So get ready, my dear. I'll be seeing you soon at your house. Ta-ta! Edward, sorry to interrupt you while you were working. Do you have time now? Yes, I do. What happened? I just got messages from your mom. What? My mom? It seems like she still hasn't given up on living together with us. Seriously? I told her that we are living with your mom. I told her that too, and she's aware of that, but she still wants to move into our place. I was trying to explain to her again, but in the meantime, your mom blocked my WhatsApp account. Oh my god. Maybe how I explained made her feel bad? I'd rather say she's just getting ahead of herself. She's kind of narrow-minded and short-tempered and impatient, and she's a bit too conservative. Basically, I guess she doesn't get along with our generation. I see. Ugh, she said she's going to contact you directly to discuss her moving in, so I think she'll reach out to you soon. Got it. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. We're a team, remember? We support each other through thick and thin. I know, but sometimes I can't help but feel guilty. It feels like I'm burdening you with all my responsibilities. Marie, you're not burdening me at all. We're partners. And that means sharing the load. Besides, it's not your fault that my mom has been causing trouble lately. I understand, but I still feel bad. I wish there was something more I could do to help. Trust me. Just having you by my side is more than enough. Your support means the world to me. Thank you, Edward. That means a lot to me, too. I appreciate your understanding. Oops, I just realized I've been chatting for too long. I should probably get back to work. No worries, Edward. I'll let you focus. But hey, to lighten the mood, how about I prepare a steak for dinner tonight? It's your absolute favorite. Really? That sounds amazing. You know how much I love your cooking. Count me in. Consider it done. I'll make sure it's extra special for you. Just a little something to show my gratitude. You're the best, Marie. I can't wait to dig into that delicious steak. 
You always manage to surprise me with your culinary skills. Well, it's the least I can do. After all, you've been working so hard. It's the perfect way for us to unwind and enjoy a cozy evening together. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, Marie, for always going the extra mile to make me happy. You're welcome, Edward. It's my pleasure. You mean the world to me, and seeing you smile makes everything worthwhile. Love you, Marie. Love you too, Edward. You're my rock, and I'm grateful to have you in my life. Mom, what are all these packages that arrived at home? Hi, Edward. Good to know all the packages arrived there. What are you thinking? What the hell do you think you're doing? Sending 10 huge boxes to our house as cash on delivery. You've already received them, right? Well, just in case, I did. Marie told me that you were planning to move in, so I was going to refuse pickup. But I felt bad for the delivery driver if I refused to pick up so many packages. The delivery fee was over $500. I'll charge you later. Oh no, you're taking money from your mom? Of course. Besides, Marie and I haven't agreed to live with you together. Our house is in a big mess, with cardboard boxes taking up the whole hallway and entrance. Ah, I'm sorry about that. I'll head to your place this noon. Then I'll put my stuff into my room. Your room? There isn't a room for you in our house. Maybe you're not aware that I have my own room at your house? I thought Marie wouldn't tell you. But my guess was right. What do you mean? I asked Marie to get a room for me when I move in. But she keeps being mean to me. As you know, that's why I thought she wouldn't prepare it for me. She was making excuses like there wasn't enough rooms. She should consider giving me her room on her bedridden mother. Edward, can you prepare a room for me? No, I can't. Why not? You agree with me living with you together, right? I've never agreed. I've been telling you that I have the same opinion as Marie's. I told you many times that we don't want to live with you. Edward, you don't have to be nice to her anymore. I don't get what you're talking about. When we are talking just between us, you can tell me your true feelings. I still don't get what you mean. Come on. Just say it. Just say. The truth is, you want to live with me. What are you really talking about? Are you kidding? I'm saying that you don't have to hesitate anymore. Hesitate? I know that you actually don't want to take care of her mother, do you? Why don't you kick her mother out and live with me from now on? Are you crazy? She has no choice but to live with her mother. So maybe it makes you hesitant to express your actual opinion in this whole world. Husbands hold a stronger position than wives. As the owner of the house, there's no reason for you to be hesitant in your own home. I still don't understand what you're trying to get at. I've allowed Marie and her mother to live in your house. So the one who should be hesitant is her. She's been forcing you to take care of her mother. And she's behaving like it's a normal thing that you do. Marie and her mother are insane. Oh no, you're taking it wrong. What? Mom, you might be thinking that I'm the owner of this house. Are you saying that you are not the owner? You are the owner, right? Edward, you really are amazing. You built such a big house in your first year of marriage. I'm so proud of you. No, no. I'm saying that you are taking it wrong. Am I? This house is Marie's parents' house. Really? But it's such a new house. It looks like a new house, but it's just because we renovated a significant portion of the house before we got married. Renovated? Marie's mother paid for the renovation. So that means... And most importantly, it's in the name of Marie. She inherited it from her father. I didn't know that. I've told you about this before. I'm sure Marie told you that as well. Oh, did you? As far as I can remember, we've told you three or four times. When I told you that, you didn't really listen well. You got so excited and praised me saying, this is a great house. Every time you said that, 
I told you that it was what she inherited from her father. So it means Marie is letting me live in her parents' house. Wait a minute. I understand that Marie inherited the house from her father. But is Marie's mother so rich? She's bedridden and doesn't even work. And like me, her husband's inheritance and survivor's pension are not that much, right? It doesn't seem like she has enough money to renovate the house. I've thought about it for a long time, but you really looked down on her family. I didn't mean so. Marie's father passed away when he was young, but he was the president of the company with a long history. I can't believe it. And Marie succeeded him and is now the president of the company. Marie's mother paid for the house renovation in appreciation for her care. She paid for the house renovation out of her father's inheritance. And Marie is paying for much of the maintenance fee of the house now. She is busy working as the president of the company. So I take care of her mother while working short hours from home. Actually, she can walk and eat normally with our support. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry to hear that. She forces you to do such troublesome work for you. What a pity. Troublesome? Pity? Yeah. As you are head of the family, it's normal that you have to work outside the home to earn money. It's abnormal when the wife works outside the home. While the husband takes care of the housework and nursing duties, everyone would laugh at such a miserable story. It's you whom everyone laughs at. What? Gender doesn't matter nowadays. Whoever can work, should work. And whoever can do the housework, should do the housework. At least that's what Marie and I think. And her mother also agrees with us. That's the reason why I don't want to live with you. What do you mean? If I live with you, you'll force your old values on us. It makes all of us stressed out. It's really stressful when the people who don't agree with our values have the strongest opinion. I didn't think that you thought in that way. Besides, if we lived together, were you thinking of working or helping her with care? Oh, why would I have to do that? I have my husband's survivor's pension, so I don't have to work. I don't want to take care of a stranger, even if she's your wife's mother. Were you attempting to exploit us? Living with such a parasite holds no benefit for us. A parasite? How dare you say that to your mother? I know why you want to live with us. Tell me that if you really know. You used up the inheritance from dad, didn't you? What? The survivor's pension comes in regularly. But you spend so much money every month, so it won't be enough. So you want to move into our house and rely on us for all the food, clothing, and housing and then use all of the money from the survivor's pension into what you want. How? How could you know that much? Mom, you said it yourself before. Dad's inheritance is smaller than you thought, and you almost use it up every month. And you mentioned that the asset he made was small. Do you have to look down on everyone but yourself? That's... So, I'm sending back all your stuff I got today. Well... About me moving in. I told you from the beginning, you can't move in. By the way, did you know I was adopted into her family when marrying her? Just to tell you, in case you don't remember. But my last name has changed because of this. Really? You forgot it? The name on the packages you've sent me so far was under my previous family name. I thought it was strange, but I now know why. About you being adopted by her family. Why did you decide to be adopted? You are the reason that I needed to be adopted. Don't you remember? What? Am I the reason? When dad passed away, my sister and her husband let you live in their house before. But you kept snubbing him after you moved in. Well, she was pissed off at you because of that and made you move out from her house. Well, that's... I saw that thing, so when I got married, I told you I'd never, ever live with you. And Marie is the only daughter of the family, so I told you that I would take her last name instead of her taking my last name. Now do you understand? Huh? Huh? Really? Please, listen to me. You've got to learn to listen to other people. So what's going to happen to our family? Who will be the son and heir? That's not the thing you should concern yourself with. 
But you know what? We're not a family of pedigree. But it may end with your generation. Even if there is an heir, what are you going to do with it? You used up all the inheritance of my father. Not only the cash, but also the stocks in our house were sold. So there's nothing to inherit. It would be better if this family comes to an end. Oh no. Uh, well... Anyway, I'll send all of your stuff back. Wait! Why? You know we can't live with you. No, I mean, I've already cancelled the lease on my apartment. So I have to move at the end of the month. That's what I thought. So let me move into your place. Well, Gwen, my aunt, should be arriving soon to stay here. Aunt? Ugh. You mean my sister, Hannah? She's always bossing me around. Yep, that's the one. She's a bit strict, but she means well. You know, you are the eldest daughter, and you inherited the stocks in the house. But, uh, well, you kind of sold off everything to buy all those unnecessary things you wanted. I guess she can't forgive you for that. Oh, please. It's my life. I can do whatever I want with my money. I understand, but it did cause some tension between you and Hannah. She's just trying to help you out, you know? She'll be here to pick you up soon, so just hang tight. No! Wait! I really don't want to spend time with her. She's so annoying. Gwen, come on. Be grateful that you have a place to live right now. Hannah's just trying to look out for you, even if it might not always feel that way. Ugh! You're taking her side too? Fine. I'll wait, but I'm telling you, this is going to be unbearable. Look, I get it. Family dynamics can be tough sometimes, but just try to give it a chance. You never know, you might find some common ground or even have a good time together. I highly doubt it, Edward. She's always nagging and criticizing me. Well, maybe this time it will be different. You never know until you try, right? I guess so. But I'm not holding my breath. This is going to be a long and dreadful visit. Hey, who knows? Maybe you'll surprise yourself and have a change of heart. Keep an open mind, Gwen. Fine, I'll try. But if it's as annoying as I expect, I'm blaming you. Fair enough, Gwen. Just remember, I'm here for you no matter what. Right after that, to my utmost annoyance, my aunt arrived at my mother's apartment, barging in unannounced as if she owned the place. With an air of self-importance, she took it upon herself to whisk my poor mother away to her own residence. Let me tell you, my aunt has been married for ages and lived miles away from our family home. She had conveniently distanced herself from any real connection with my mom only to resurface now that she was furious about the whole property selling fiasco. Oh, the audacity. So, my aunt, in her infinite wisdom, graciously allowed my mom to live in her house, but not without attaching a slew of conditions and demands. She believed that making my mom slave away with endless housework and part-time jobs would be the ultimate form of recompense for her alleged sins. It's maddening, I tell you. The nerve of that woman to think she can just control my mother's life like that. But, alas, with my mom out of the picture, a glimmer of tranquility managed to seep back into Mary's life, my life, and my dear mother's life. Despite still being physically impaired on one side of her body, my mom has managed to regain some semblance of normalcy and find solace in the little pleasures of life. It's a small victory amidst the chaos my aunt has unleashed upon us, but we cling to it dearly.